Okay, guys, so we're back and we are here with the wonderful Sarah Table, award winning artist from the UK. Um, Sarah, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? <laughs> yeah, not too bad, man. Not too bad. I'm actually really glad to have you on the show today. Um, obviously, you know me already. I've been following you from the longest time. I know, yes. <laughs> so it's, it's actually really great to have you on the show. Um, you know what? We're going to get straight into this interview. So, yeah, just. Tell the people how you're doing. How's things been since um, you know the lockdown started? How have you found it within yourself and also as an artist? It's been highs and lows, to be honest. Um, I think with everyone, there have been moments of, you know, initially we thought, yeah, it wasn't going to be a long thing. We'll be done in six or seven or eight weeks. And then it just carried on and on and on. It was like, when is this ever going to end? And even now it feels like, when is this going to end? So I think there's been moments of being completely exhausted by the whole thing mm -hmm. and almost feeling like gosh you know is this life yeah. you know but at the same time we know that we have hope in God and I think it's just being able to circle back and, and identify who our true source is and I think for me it, the seasons have actually helped me to kind of make more time for God spend more time with God and and discover new things about God as well it's, it's been a mixed blessing I should say that's good <laughs> I mean that's good that you've been able to actually still spend time with God. Like I said, it's been a mixed blessing, but um, you've, yeah. you've managed to keep through. And you know, one of the things I'm really been impressed by is that even during this period, you've still been active in the music side of things. You've been releasing music with lyric videos and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and you know, at the start of the, of the year, or should I say about April this year, you released Safe in Youth, um, the lyric video, yes. um, which featured on your Keep Walking album yeah. um, with Tanique. So um, tell us a little bit about that particular song in itself. Why did you choose that one to, to do the lyric video for? And, what was the, yeah. the vision behind the particular song itself? Do you know what? I wrote it probably in 2017 for my 2018 album. And at the time I wrote it, actually, we were having lots of spats of stabbings and acid attacks and okay. um, people driving into uh, pedestrians on bridges. And oh, it was just yeah, like yeah. everywhere you look, if you remember, sometime 2017, there was always something in the news, some terrorists here and there. And it felt like, should we actually go out? Can yeah, we even I, go I out? Yeah. yeah and, and so... That song, I was just reflecting on, you know, that sense of insecurity that we may have as people, whether Christians or not, just human beings. Just can I be on the street and wouldn't somebody just come and attack me? And then I just wrote the song, you know, we don't know what's around the corner, but we know that the Lord is our refuge. His name is our strong tower. We run into him and we are safe. And that was literally why I wrote the song. And I think when we started getting into the, the build-up of the pandemic, not quite the peak yet, because we didn't even know it was <laughs> going to get that bad. But sometime, you know, at the early stages, I thought this is a very uncertain time and it would be a good song to put out, even though at the time it was probably going on a year and a half old in terms of the song. It wasn't a new song, but it had no visuals. So I thought I could just put out the visuals and encourage people with the words of the song. And that was really um, how that happened. You know, it's really good. I mean, funny enough, I was having a conversation with somebody else um, earlier today. And one thing that we said is that we like to create music that can um, go on over time. You know what I'm saying? Not just a song just for the now. Um, mm. And that's clear in, in the fact that through that particular song that you wrote, you was able to write it in 2017 based on all the incidents that were happening at the time. And I remember a lot of those. Um, mm -hmm. And to come into 2020, we're facing a worldwide pandemic and the yeah. song is still so relevant um, to today, which is really yeah. great. So, um, I mean, even in terms of getting Tanique to feature on, how did that come about? Did you just like dial her up and say, Tanique, I've got a track, or how did that come you about? No, I'd always known that I was going to have Tanique on the song. I just didn't know what song it was going to be. <laughs> so from day one, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to have Tanique on the song, whatever that is. So when, when I wrote um, Safe In You, I kind of felt like this song would be a good one to have a rap because of the vibe that it had. Okay, yeah. it had like a really urban R&B vibe and I thought it'd be nice to kind of give it a bit of a, a boost with a rap. Yeah. And there was no doubt in my mind it was going to be Tanique. Tanique. So obviously I <laughs> rang her up and was like, yeah, I've got a song. Can you write a rap to it? And that was how that happened. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, guys, safe in you um, from the Sarah Tabor. I'm going to play that now. Enjoy the track. i 
<laughs> Listen. Yeah. Been longing for arms to hold us, finding peace like looking for gold dust. You said you'll never forsake us, I only see the pain that breaks us. Your promises stay in my brain, though, our hopes coming down like rain in the window. The hate that I see in between us, causing betrayal like Judas and people. Despite the fear that they're feeding, Earth needs a miracle healing. We're seeking pleasures for free, like we have been given a magical genie. Running when storms get reckless, cause under your shadow we're safest, never alone. I'm clinging to Jesus, cause only He can guide and protect us. So guys, that was Safe in You by Sarah Table featuring Tanik. Uh, Sarah, like I said before, you know, one of the things I liked is that you've kept active um, even during this period in terms of your music and, and stuff you've been doing on social media. And that wasn't your only um, song that you, you released this year, if you want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, you also released another one. So tell us about that one as well. Yes, I released Spirit Come in August which I actually wrote in February um, this year. At the time I was doing a Daniel fast. So it was something I started doing some years ago. I just, uh, in the month of February, just take time off and- You, you, you know just, what, let me, let me yeah. just go right there because funny enough, your Daniel fast, she was actually doing some YouTube videos on that as well, wasn't she? I was doing every day. I was doing a devotional yeah, every day on YouTube. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah every, I was live every, it was tedious, but I was like, somebody's <laughs> gonna be blessed. And there were a few people who were waiting every day, obviously not great, thousands, man. but there were people who were literally every day waiting mm -hmm. to hear the devotionals. So, um, and I've decided to do it every February, so I'm gonna do it again next okay. February. But I was literally just meditating on the word and praying and reading the book of Acts and just going through Acts chapter one through to two, three and four. Yeah. And I started reflecting on how the apostles who were previously, you know, locked away in hiding mm -hmm. because they were timid about, you know, anything to do with Jesus. They were yeah, embarrassed yeah. even. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, they suddenly were new people. You know, they became new men. They stepped out confidently, boldly, declaring the truth, declaring salvation in Christ. The church was born and we're living in the aftermath of that even today. And I just started praying to God, like, Lord, we need to have that in our generation. We need a fresh outpouring of your spirit. Please, Lord, baptize us again. And I just started praying those prayers. And then the song just came from there, literally okay. as I was sitting on my sofa praying. I just had the verse, the chorus, the whole thing. So it was a very interesting one because I didn't even set out to write a song. I was just praying, reading the word, and that all just came into, kind of fell into line, basically. So fell into place, rather. You know, yeah. it's, it's, sometimes I find um, that's just how it comes anyway. You, you don't even set yourself out, but you find yourself in a mode where you're connect, you know, you're connected with God, you're connected with what the Spirit is doing. And yeah. it's something just birthed straight out yeah. of that. Yeah. And the song is actually a really good track. It's a powerful message and stuff like that. And you know what? I'm going to play it for the people as well. Let them enjoy it that one as well so guys this one by Sarah Table Spirit Come enjoy Oh 
Okay, so Sarah, we've had your two songs from this year. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I want to get to the, the, the real meaty part, you know, the reason as to why I asked you to come and do this particular interview. Um, and it's something that really kind of like struck a chord with me when I saw it, really. And it's the mm-hmm. fact that you've actually been working with a charity um, and released or will be releasing a song that is literally going to be giving some of the, the proceeds towards this charity. So yeah. tell us about the charity. Tell us about the song and you know, the whole project, what, it, what it's about. Yeah, I mean, the song is a Christmas single, my first ever Christmas single called okay. Hear the Sound. And um, at the time I wrote it, I wrote it back in March 2019. It was just out of the blues. I wasn't even thinking about Christmas. It just came about. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I finished recording it this year and I planned to release it, I wasn't going to do a music video because I didn't even have the money for it. I was going to do a lyric video like I've done in, with the last two songs that you've yeah. already played. And um, But then I found I stumbled upon a, a, a platform where I could actually raise money to have you know to complete project so I then said you know what if I'm going to go down this route I'm going to try and make as much of a difference as possible with this song because I'd previously been thinking about how lockdown has been very difficult for kids below a yeah. certain age you know adults can go on zoom they can go on social media they can call their friends they can even sneak out and visit people if they wanted but kids below a certain age do not have telephones they don't have social media for months on the end they were locked in they couldn't see their friends. I mean, kids are designed to spit in each other's faces, poke their, you know, each other in the nose, yes, roll in yeah. the mud. That is what <laughs> they were designed to do. And then you've got them sat in a house, especially if they live in a flat, for example. Um, they can't even go outside of that entire, those four walls. I mean, if you live in a house, you can go in the backyard or whatever. But if you live mm. in a block of flats, just think about kids in those kind of situations. They cannot step out for fresh yeah. air for months on end. And even though they're quite young and they can't really say much, 
it does take a toll on them. So I was hoping that I'd have the chance to do something to make the, um, Christmas special for the kids, which is why even the music video that I did for the song, I made sure that it was really kid focused. I got lots and lots of kids to, and That's I great. was inundated by parents. Even after the video shoot, I still had parents asking if there was space. And I'm like, oh, I've shot the video already. Because even all through the year, when you think about it, they haven't had the chance to do anything fun. Mm -hmm. They haven't had the chance to go out. They haven't had the chance to go to birthday parties, nothing. You know, so I was like, yeah, this is a chance for you guys to just come and, you know, let your hair down. And also when other children watch the music video, it will rub off on them. They will be able to see themselves in that state. They will be able to get some joy from watching other children have a joyful time, you know, playing with a fake sound, opening presents and all of that fun stuff. Um, so I really wanted to do that for the kids, but I was trying to take it even further by partnering with a charity that works with kids or with parents of young kids. And so I came upon um, Colourful Beginnings. Now, they're a UK-based charity founded by a lady who's had two premature babies back to back. And so she knows firsthand what the kind of challenges and struggles parents of premature babies face, yeah, especially yeah. given that it's an emergency, right? Going into labour, on average is an emergency at 40 weeks but then think about 24 weeks 26 weeks when you're not even thinking about a child coming mm -hmm. you have nothing you know you're not prepared you don't have nappies nothing you have no clue what to do and then you're plunged she, she literally said having a premature baby is like being plunged into the thames when you can't swim and being told figure it out yeah, yeah. you know so she having had those experiences decided to have to set up a, a charity that provided a support network and also provided vital care packages for parents in the first few weeks or months even of having a baby because they're just, I mean, with COVID, for example, it's even more tedious because the moral support that you can have from family is restricted because you can't have as many people around yes, supporting. Yeah. And apparently some parents now, you can only have one parent per time with a the child. There's a lot of restriction even with your own child. And that does take a toll on you know parents mentally, emotionally, and obviously even financially, because some people may be out of work because they've gone into labor too soon and they might be doing a contract and job or whatever. So they try as much as possible to step in and help. And so what, I've, what I'm hoping I can do is help them get as many of these care packages over Christmas, because sadly, one in 13 babies is born premature. One, wow. that's a, huge that's a lot. That's a massive I had no idea, which is why I'm glad I'm doing this, because it's really opened my eyes yeah. to these sort of things. Um, so we actually, I'm doing a campaign saying, tell 13 to tell 13. So just tell people about this and let's, as much as possible, buy the single because 50% of the proceeds for the single from the single are going towards helping this charity buy these care packages because like it or not, sadly, there will be people going into labor over Christmas while we're having our turkey without planning and staying in there for a good few months because they don't yeah. get discharged for at least three, four, sometimes almost a year, you know, that's going to be their Christmas story. I want to help them, you know, it's not going to be, it won't end everything, but it would somehow make it easier for them to cope. So um, that's why we're doing, that's why I'm partnering with this charity so that they can provide as much of those care packages as possible to parents who sadly will be in hospital over Christmas because one in 13 babies are always born premature. I mean, it's, it's a very, I mean, even listening to you speak about it, I mean, it's, it's such a tough topic in, in general. I mean, that kind of situation is, I suppose it's really one of those, unless you go through, you can't really grasp just yeah. how deep it is for someone yeah. going through that situation. And like you said, um, the whole thing of being in covid as well is just like added on top of that and really complicated very, yeah. it yeah um and it's, it's I and mean, i'm glad that you've been able to share that today because i think sometimes especially during this covid situation we can get caught up um, in seeing things one way in terms of how covid is related but actually to actually hear you know actually there's a even bigger effect on other people which are really mm. struggling already but you know with this compounded on top it yeah. just really makes it, really makes it a lot more um, yeah. difficult. So, guys, you know, do support it. Go and download stream. Well, not even stream. Download. No stream, buy the track. No. Buy the <laughs> yeah. track. We don't use stream. Buy the track. No, don't use stream. Yeah. Because we need you guys to um, be able to get as much money as possible so that Sarah can do the job that she's trying to do and donate to this charity. Um, Sarah, so we know that the track is out now and the video itself is coming out um, on the 18th. Um, yeah. So really, what's the what is the what you're looking for in terms of the amount of support you'd like to get? Is there something you look, want people to do other than download the track? Is there a way they can actually go and contribute to the charity themselves in a different way? I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. I mean, if if you've bought the single, because the single is only ninety nine p, so you might want to give like twenty pounds or whatever. So you can go to colorfulbeginnings.com and make a donation. There's donation. Um, 
links or buttons on the charity's website as well so you can actually by all means do that yeah because i know 99p is a very small amount of money to, to donate to a charity also one of the things that we thought about was gifting the song to people because on itunes when you scroll all the way down to um to the bottom and um, bearing in mind apple music is for streaming itunes is for purchases a lot of yes, people don't yes. realize yes, um so they just go to apple and they're like well i can't buy i'm like yeah you need to go to itunes <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and apple sometimes kind of defaults redirects people to apple instead mm -hmm. of itunes so on itunes if you scroll all the way to the bottom you can actually gift people music so if you wanted to give towards this entire campaign by supporting the song as well as a charity and you feel like 99p is nothing and you want to give 10 pounds for example then you can give to nine more people the song if they're on itunes mm -hmm. or you can gift it to them on amazon the two main platforms where you can buy music in the uk are itunes and amazon you can buy and then you can gift you can equally go onto Colourful Beginnings website and make a donation if you wanted to give more. Guys, that's a great way for you to do it, especially Christmas time. You're out there yeah. buying gifts for everybody else. Just add an extra pound on the amount you've donated to someone's gift and say, you know, I want to give you this song as well in support mm -hmm. of this great charity. Um, definitely go and buy that track, guys. Uh, we're going to play it for you guys to hear now, um, but I want you to go out there and really support it. And like Sarah said, literally go to colourfulbeginnings.com and just donate as much as you can thinking of those children which are um, struggling the parents which are struggling at this particular time mm -hmm. of the year and just make a difference in somebody's life um, you know it becomes such a cliche that we see every year when they talk about you know this thing is for not just for christmas it's for life but the fact is it's, it's the truth there's, there's children that yeah. are generally suffering and struggling parents which are generally um, mm -hmm. struggling at this time of the year for more reasons than some of us even know so yes. guys really do yeah. go out there and support this one um Sarah, you're doing a great work with this track. Okay. Um, and I am definitely going to be um, purchasing it now. Um, oh, thanks. Adding that, adding that to my collection. That's an extra 99p for an us. An extra 99p. <laughs> and I think I'm going to have to do the same thing I'm telling everybody else to do. I'm not going to tell you guys to do something that I'm not going to do myself. So I will be gifting this song to five people. Oh, um, wow. Of what um, Sarah's doing, the charity is doing. So guys, here's the track right now okay. by Sarah Table. Please go and support it. Hear the sound. Here we go. Can you hear the sound of the baby boy? Let the people shout, let the world rejoice For today the king is born He's the everlasting son Let the heavens sing, let the oceans roar
Okay, so Sarah, just before we wrap up um, the interview for today, where can um, people find you if they want to like support what you're doing as well in general, um, your music, yeah. um, and just keep up to date with all the stuff you're you're going to be doing into 2021. Yes, so I'm on all social media platforms: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Sarah Tabo Music. You can actually find me more active on Instagram. Don't ask me why. So it's Sarah Tabo Music, but my website is sarahtabo.co.uk. And you can check me out on all those platforms. I've got some really exciting stuff coming. I've actually got a live stream Christmas carol um, and a few other things in 2021, which you do not want to miss. So yeah, connect with me on all those platforms. Guys, you heard her connect with her Sarah Tabo Music on all the platforms. Sarah, we can't let you go without my um, traditional random question that I like oh to dear, ask. Oh people. dear, oh so, dear, oh um, dear. <laughs> I've literally just had to think of it on the spot now. Mostly we've been talking about kids today, and I know you're, you yourself, you're a mother. Um, and I definitely believe that all mothers are super women, if you ask me. Yes. But um, as, in terms of super characters, superpowers, if you could be a super character, Someone that really exists already. So I'm not going to say superpower because everyone says superpower. But if you could be like a, I don't know, a Superman or a Flash or a Batman or whoever, which superhero would you? <laughs> is that one that can be in many places at the same time? <laughs> I don't um, know. If there I is. can't think of any. That's the one I'd like to be. <laughs> <laughs> you would be both, definitely. Yeah. I definitely um, want to be in, be in different places at the same time. Yeah, I think, I think you done. need to be the Flash then, so you can just like yeah, zoom just be the Flash. <laughs> <over there>. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the one for you. Then. Okay, me, Sarah yeah. Table, the Flash, you heard it right here. <laughs> so, right, it's been That's such a, a privilege one. having you on Thank the show you. today. Thank you for coming in and talking about your music and the charity. And um, yeah, we're definitely going to get behind that and support that. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'll speak to you soon. All right, All right bye. God bless. Bye. Like a child, I'm going to trust in you. Not having all the answers to life's questions picture I don't understand but hey I know some way you will save the day so I will keep her faith in the like a child. child I'm gonna trust in you I'm, I'm gonna, gonna believe what you say and you do I'll keep holding on oh, oh, oh. I'll somehow you will see me through I will trust in you I'm gonna believe what you say Through the hurt and pain Through the disappointments And through all the